Chicago Bulls GM Mark Eversley has recently made his desire to have DeMar DeRozan be a long-term part of the team No, We're going to talk about what that could mean for DeMar DeRozan's upcoming contract extension talks with the team. We're also going to look at, DeMar- at Mark Eversley's comments in regards to Patrick Williams facing an important season and if Patrick Williams can live up to those expectations. And lastly, we're going to look at the athletics tier list and how they completely and utterly disrespected DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine. We're going to get to all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. First up, we got Mark Eversley's comments in regards to DeMar DeRozan. Now, we all know that DeMar DeRozan is kind of the next big domino to figure out what's going to happen with the Chicago Bulls, and that's really going to kind of tell what's next for the Chicago Bulls on the horizon, right? Is a mini retool or something coming, or are they going to be running it back yet again with this core and doubling down with this core for probably another two to three years after this season, right? And, you know, as I am not the highest, person on on DeMar DeRozan in regards to like keeping him here long term I understand what he means and what he brings to this team right I've never said that DeMar DeRozan is a terrible player I actually think it's pretty crazy that a lot of people when you try to use that oh he's bad let's go ahead and get get trade him and get a lot back for him that's not how it, that's not how it works you want to trade valuable assets so that you can get stuff back for them other than just getting trash back for trash DeMar DeRozan is a is a very good to great player at times with the way that he manages the game, right? I just look at the age factor of it, it like what, what comes with it, how ball dominant he is. The Bulls kind of trying to modernize that offense, but GM Mark Eversley wants to see DeMar DeRozan here long term. Saying this, in his first two years here, he's been terrific. Probably one of, the, one of our two best players. All NBA, he continues to work at the rate that you would want a veteran to work. I, I was talking to him yesterday, Billy AK, and I just about uh, the season, our outlook, what our goals were, and what we're looking to accomplish. And he's re- he's completely aligned with what we want to do. He's the ultimate leader. He's the ultimate teammate. He takes all the young guys under his wing. He's been terrific. Then goes on to say this. I would love DeMar to be part of this program long term. Let's see how that plays out and what that looks like going forward when those conversations take place. We'll speak about that more when that happens, but we hope Debo's back. He's been an integral part of this program's success. We hope he's here long term. Now, I know that that's going to elicit a lot of different responses from Bulls fans. You're going to get some Bulls fans to say, yeah, clearly, he's been our best player, even though I disagree with that, and probably most consistent, right, player. Um, and, you know, they're, they're going to be the Bulls fans to say, oh, we're going to run it back again. What do you mean? Trade him for anything right now. Let him walk for nothing. And I understand all the mindsets when it comes to that. I really do, right? And it comes down to what is this front office trying to accomplish? And the fact of the matter, I know they're going to get some be some people who get to type it and saying, well, if it doesn't get us closer to the title, send us out. It's not, there's nothing, there's no move right now, the one singular move that gets the Bulls closer to the title. And with what AK has shown in running the Denver Nuggets before, the thing that AK did that was unlike the way he runs teams was when he came in, traded Wendell, traded Laurie, right? Well, Laurie wanted to go, but, you know, made all those trades to bring in Vooch. That was that's not atypical of what AK does. Typically, AK likes to build organically, right? Let things play its course. Bet on his players that he that he brought in that they're going to develop things like that. That's typically what AK does. And when they came over, Mark Eversley and AK, to this team, they talked about building organically, building through the draft, development being a thing. That is why, you know, me on this platform, I talk so heavily as much about the Bulls' lack of development because that's what we were promised when this new regime came in and took over this team, and that's not what we've received, at least not consistently. We have not had meaningful development on this team. But with you know the hiring of a development coach, those type of things, let's hope that those, those things start becoming a more regular part of the Chicago Bulls franchise now. But when it comes down to it, it I won't be surprised by the Chicago Bulls bringing Debo back, right? It really depends on that number. Now, I do think if, if – DeMar DeRozan is looking to get the max that he can get, which is what that $40 million contract worth like a hundred and so, so million over four years. That's where it starts getting a little bit different. I, I, I don't think that AK and Eversley are going to sign him to a contract that large. Now, I could be wrong with that as well, right? But I don't expect that to happen, not for a player that at that point will be going into their 35-year-old season. And while DeMar DeRozan has a game that's going to age gracefully, right? 
DeMar is, I don't think DeMar is ever going to average less than 20 points per game, no matter how long he plays. DeMar DeRozan could play till he's damn near 40, and I think he's still going to get you about 22 points a game. 22 and 4 is probably what he's still going to be giving you at that point in time. So, you know, it, you could do a lot worse than betting on a, a, a veteran, an older player like DeMar DeRozan, because he's going to still find a way to be productive, right? And he's stayed pretty much healthy throughout his whole NBA career, hasn't really had the huge injuries that have cost him to miss seasons and things like that. So, you know, you can do a lot worse. And then, it, you know, Mark Eversley talking about how important he's been to the maturity of those young players. Now, we want to see that payoff on the court, right? We all want to see that happen. But when it comes down to it, I think that if both sides are motivated to get it done, they're going to get it done. But what does that mean for the outlook of this Bulls team? And this is this is the part that you guys you've got to eat our medicine with. And, you know, I always try to be realistic. Unless, you know, this this adding Torrey Craig, adding Javon Carter, I think that it's going to pay off larger than some Bulls fans are absolutely thinking. I really do. And I know not everybody shares that mindset. I'm not saying that this is going to push the Bulls into being a a, a second-round team or anything like that, but, like, I do think it's going to pay off big. And, you know, now seeing AK kind of shift to making up for what Lonzo brought to this team, I think we're now we're going to start seeing, hey, we can, how do we add and supplement these players Better, which, you know, we get into Mark's co- Mark Everly's comments on Patrick Williams, which kind of talk about that supplementing uh, those those top players a little bit better as well. But until the Chicago Bulls have that star, that starter, superstar player, it's going to be a while until the Bulls really make that move that's like it's a championship move. Right now we're making moves to move up the tier in the Eastern Conference, and we'll see if they're successful in that. Now, I want to hear with, with you guys, when you hear Mark Eversley saying they want DeMar to be here long-term, considering about to turn 34 years old if he didn't already i think i think he turns 34 this week i think this is what it is um but with that said like <laughs> excuse me um what do you think that means do you think that means just another two three years to kind of align with uh with his, uh, nikola vucevic's contract what do you guys think that means let me know what you guys think on all that down below we're gonna this is gonna be something that we speculate and talk about all season long as the bulls go up and down the ebbs and flows of the season Everybody's going to be talking about, especially in the national media, what does this mean for DeMar DeRozan's pending extension and things like that. So it's going to be a living conversation, but I want to hear from you guys about where you sit right now with Debo being a long-term part of the Chicago Bulls and how long would you re-sign him for if you were the GM? I want to hear that from you guys, but let's get into the next one. Mark Eversley also had comments in regards to Patrick Williams, right? And he said this, he has shown flashes over the first three years. I want to see him show more instances of flashes more consistently. He's got he's got it in him. A lot of it comes down to growth off the court, and and I t- and I can tell you he's starting to grow. He's starting to get it. He's starting to click. And when he puts it together, and he will put it together, he might we might have something special. I think it's really it's a really important year for Patrick. One one as a player, and two as somebody in our locker room to kind of complement those guys. We talked a lot about people fitting in with those three. I think Patrick is is going to be challenged with that same thing. Uh, I, but I think this year is the year w- where he really needs to step it up and figure it out. Listen, that is Mark Eversley on that has the, has his beat on the on the pulse of Bulls fans. This is the year for Patrick Williams, and I think when you hear Mark Eversley say that this that they want to see a lot from Patrick Williams, it all makes sense. A contract extension is pending for Patrick Williams. And I know some Bulls fans are going to hope and say, "Hey, maybe we should ship out Patrick. Man, we're not going to re-sign Patrick." Listen here. Patrick Williams is going to get a second contract with the Chicago Bulls. Now, I think how he develops over that time is going to tell the story on if he's there throughout that full second contract he's going to get with the Chicago Bulls. But again, as I said, I like to be realistic with you guys, and I want to be clear here. Patrick Williams, regardless of how he performs this season, will get a second contract with the Chicago Bulls. Take this clip, clip it, save it, post it for later. If I'm wrong, we'll all flame me. It's fine. But Patrick Williams is going to get a second contract with the Chicago Bulls, and as he should. He's about to turn 22 years old. 22 years old. And while you, some of you guys are trying to write the story on a 22-year-old already, it's foolish. Now, I will say this. It's, it's preparing to write that story is not, right? Because you have to, you have, at some point, somebody is just who they are. But Patrick Williams still has more than enough time to still develop as a player, as a man. And I think, like, as Patrick matures as a person we're going to see that maturity come out on the basketball court as well we've talked about the numbers i'm not about to throw you guys a lot of raw numbers and all this because when it comes down to it the one thing that we need patrick williams to do is to unlock the aggression to unlock what's in between his ears to become that a a player that just understands his role more consistently hell we're talking about a player like tory craig who's not a better player than patrick williams 
starting ahead of him potentially just because you under you will you know the consistent level of effort you're going to get from Patrick Williams. And regardless of whatever his role is, Patrick needs to unlock Patrick. He needs to become P Will. I don't give a damn about the Kawhi comparisons. I don't give a damn about none of that shit. It comes down to just this simple thing. Be the best version of you. And Patrick Williams did take a step last season. He didn't take a leap that some people want, that we all want. Let me be clear. I think everybody wants Patrick Williams to take a leap. We have some people doubt if he can take that leap, but everybody wants to see him take that leap. He took a step, a step in that path, and he needs to continue to grow in that area to become the player that we need him to become. And that's just what it comes down to. We need Patrick Williams to come in and be a better and more consistent player, a gap filler is what I called him earlier in, to be able to fill the gap of the needs of this core a little bit better defensively, shooting the ball more, attacking the basket, you're right, uh, getting rebounds a little bit more, blocking shots, being that defensive beast that he's been almost his whole career, but just refine the game and unlock your offense a little bit more. Stop being passive P and go out there and be P will. That's what we need to see from Patrick. And I hope that we do start seeing that this year. I hope that this is the year we start saying and it may come month after month, just him improving this season. But I hope this is the season that we walk away and we say, did you see the development Patrick Williams has this season? Instead of us still asking the question is when is he going to develop, right? Again, step, not a leap is probably the thing to expect, especially when you're playing with the ball dominant players that Patrick is going to play with throughout regardless if he starts coming off the bench like people use this thing of him coming off the bench like oh he can unlock his offense by coming off the bench one of Zach Vooch and DeMar is always going to be on the court and then even if he is with that second unit Kobe's still going to be there with him who's another player that needs the ball in his hands Patrick needs to find a way to contribute without and Billy Donovan isn't going to call a bunch of plays for Patrick Williams that just is what it is unless Billy Donovan changes his mindset which I hope that he would for a development purpose but if he's not Patrick Williams needs to find a way to operate in those margins and become better at the things he does. Took almost eight shots per game last season. Up that to 11, right? With the, with the percentages he shoots, Patrick Williams up in his shots to just 11. Just 11 shots per game, right? Which he can do putbacks. It's not necessarily saying run 11 plays for Patrick Williams a game, but putbacks. Taking players off the dribble, attacking the rim, following shots. Those type of things can get Patrick Williams more shots and thus be a more productive player and that defense that he brings, we know what Patrick Williams can be. The biggest question is, when will he unlock it? Hopefully it's this season. And if it is, that definitely ups the ceiling for the Chicago Bulls as well. All right, let's get into the last topic for today. The Athletic had this, this tier list, which I apparently missed. This happened all the way back on August 18th, but I missed it. And they the disrespect for DeMar DeRozan, keep in mind, like I said, I am not the highest person on DeMar DeRozan, but I still understand his value. Uh, you know, some people try to, like, if you're not high, like, we, we know everybody tries to paint this thing like either you love a player or you hate him, where the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? But the disrespect, like, the, the, in, in the small forward tier ranking, DeMar DeRozan was ranked in the third tier below players like Chris Middleton, right above uh, Mikael Bridges, but you have players like Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Like, don't get me wrong, Kawhi Leonard, fully healthy, we know is a better player than DeMar DeRozan. But Kawhi Leonard can't stay on the court. So even if you're using, which in the article, they, they talked a lot about DeMar DeRozan's lack of playoff success. Understand it. That's real, right? You can't take away from facts. DeMar DeRozan in the playoffs has left much to be desired for the majority of his career. But guess what? He was playing, right? He was playing. You can't even bet that Kawhi Leonard is going to get on the goddamn court, right? Come on, man. Like, come on. Availability has to be a factor in the things that he's able to do and consistently, right? DeMar DeRozan, yeah, he hasn't had the super highs where he's like an MVP candidate or anything like that, but DeMar DeRozan has been a consistent guy. Top, He's going to be top 30 to top 25 in all-time scoring What by the time this season is over. And this is a player that, that people keep doubting DeMar DeRozan, and we know he uses it for fuel, as he should. The disrespect has to stop, fam. Like, I, I'm all for saying somebody like, Hey, he has his defensive limitations. He doesn't shoot three-pointers. He's ball dominant. All those are legitimate critiques. But when you put DeMar DeRozan at the bottom tier of small forwards in the NBA, considering what he's able to do and his win shares, yes, his teams have typically over his career been better when he's off the court than on per the statistics. I understand that. But you can't keep doubting what DeMar DeRozan brings to a basketball court because you're going to find yourself on the wrong side of history. Now, is when it comes to, to Zach Levine, further disrespect. They have Zach Levine not even ranked in the top four tiers of shooting guards. They have players like, like Derek White, Tyrese Maxey, Austin Reeves ranked above, uh, above Zach Levine as a shooting guard. Keep in mind, 
Yes, he's been he has not been fully healthy the last couple of seasons for those full seasons, which has absolutely impacted his numbers. But let's be real here. When Zach Levine is fully healthy, he's one of the best scorers in the NBA and one of the most efficient scorers in the NBA at that. And you got Austin Reeves ranked above him? Listen, keep giving motivation to this team. And that's all I can say. That's all I say every single year. Keep throwing the doubt because we want it. We want all of it. And best believe, like I said on Chicago Bears Central, I'm going to bring that here. Don't nobody roast as good as a Chicagoan. And when you're wrong, we're going to tell you that you were wrong and we're going to pull it back up. So best believe, I'm, I'm keeping receipts. As you guys know, I always keep the receipts. We'll see how the Bulls perform this season. But stop disrespecting our players. That's all my time for today. Make sure you guys are following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag episodes, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And we've been doing it for two years. I appreciate you guys so much. And like liked in every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See you right if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, break, media. media.